How many times have you lost or broken the cover to one of your favorite gadgets like this and gone, damn, I need a new one of those. Well, guess what? We're going to make one of those. My name is Eric Stribble. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Alfred Backpack Hanger in stainless steel and aluminum designed by me holds your backpack, lets you charge your phone, holds your keys, super versatile. So I'm packing up some here that were recently sold. Thanks for those of you who've purchased recently. It really helps support the channel. This is the part that's supplied by the client and they specifically requested an epoxy part. So I'm just doing the standard cleanup and we're gonna make a mold so we can make these pieces out of epoxy. So this, this little piece right here, this presents a potential problem. Now, the silicone, it's, it's a pretty big undercut right here. I think the silicone can handle it, but I have to make 10 of these things and I'm not 100% sure the silicone won't tear. So we're gonna make a little piece here. And normally in production, this would be like a slide. But this is going to be a little removable part. We're going to cast something here out of some silicone. To make the parts for this little mold on that thing, we're going to use the laser cutter and cut all the pieces out of cardboard. I love cutting stuff out of cardboard on the laser cutter. It's super precise and I can quickly make literally any shape that I want and you'll see there are even little hexagons in the cardboard here and those are registration holes that are gonna lock in this piece into the final silicone mold super easy with a laser of course we're gonna seal it with some shellac the shellac will just keep the silicone from seeping into the cardboard. I'm using Smooth-On's Dragon Skin 30. It's platinum silicone. It's not something I normally use. I just happen to have it on hand, so we're gonna use it for this project. Where you saw me doing the cleanup in the very beginning of the video, this is where that little rubber stopper lives. So we're gonna make a mold for this. And yes, I am gonna make an open face mold. Probably the first time ever on YouTube. I'm not a big fan of open face molds. Obviously you can't control that last surface, but in this case, it's just a little stopper that goes on that little flexible clip, probably prevents it from rubbing against something else or keeping it quiet. I don't really know. All right, let's demold this part right here. Now this is platinum silicone. It's possible that the silicone did not set up. I don't know what kind of rubber this is and sometimes weird stuff happens with, with platinum silicone and materials where you don't know what the material is or whatever. We've certainly seen it before. So we'll, who knows what's gonna happen when we take this one off. Let's see how it looks. Take it out, looks good there. Sure as shit, called it, didn't set up. It's one of the reasons I dislike platinum silicone. Now this is the little key that I poured in here on the top of this guy. Uh, I'm gonna strip the cardboard off of this and we'll have our little key piece so that we can make uh, basically a three part mold for this cover. Now the beautiful thing about the cardboard is it releases easily and check out the detail that you get from just cardboard. We'll clean that up and we'll mount that down to the main splitter board which will also be out of cardboard. We'll use some PVA to attach the part. While that's drying, we will cut the key seal. And a key seal for me is the part that keys and seals the two mold halves together. There's an undercut that we're building into this. This will lock the silicone halves together and you'll see that later in the video. So now let's clay up the end of the battery cover here so that the silicone doesn't get in there when we pour this first half of the mold. And we'll put this key seal down and you can kind of see that undercut there. 
It'll become more clear when we pour the silicone. Let's get this guy into the mold box. I need to create an end since we're only using part of a mold box. And we'll screw that together. These are existing mold boxes that I reuse. And I have videos about that already. And I'll link to that up here in the top right. A little bit of clay to make sure that we don't get any seepage of the silicone out of the mold. And we need a little release agent on that silicone. Otherwise, our silicone is going to stick to itself. And you don't want that. Again, this is a platinum silicone. It's been degassed in the vacuum chamber to remove most of the bubbles. And we'll pour that in slowly from one location. So after the silicone has cured, we can take it out. And what we want to do is we want to lower this in the mold box. First, we have to remove the cardboard so that we can pour the second half of the silicone against the first part of the mold. I need to make some little vents and I make these out of brass. I clip them and then I squeeze the ends so that they open up. We're gonna use a little super glue on the brass and then a little bit of kicker on the brush. And these are all my vents. This is where the excess resin will come out of. So you wanna pour low and vent high. We need some more release agent, and this is naphtha and Vaseline, and I use this for my release agents all the time. And you wanna put that on the silicone everywhere so that the second part of the pour doesn't stick. It's the only thing that sticks the silicone is silicone. So you wanna make sure you get that everywhere, but you do not wanna put it on the part. It doesn't need it on the part. Silicone will not stick to that. It will form to that. A little bit of clay, a little fillet clay, and we'll mix up some more of this platinum silicone and we'll pour this onto the first half of the mold. Sorry, I missed a little bit of filming there. I'm gonna let this cure. So the pink straw or the pink tube is where we're gonna pour into or inject our resin into and all the little brass tubes are where the resin will vent out of when we go to make the part. So the mold is now complete. We need to take it apart and remove the master so that we can start making parts. With the undercut molded into the two halves, this is what locks the two halves of the silicone together. Let's break out the epoxy. So this is thick, to say the least. Already a big negative for me. As a matter of fact, it's so thick that I need to put it in the little miniature crock pot to heat it up so that it flows a little bit better. This epoxy is equal parts A and equal parts B, which of course makes it easy, but you can just use a scale. I mean, I don't know, just do some math. Anyway. We're going to add a little bit of white pigment to this because we want to duplicate the parts in white. And then we're going to put this epoxy into the vacuum chamber to degas it just like we would any urethane resin. I pre-fill the mold a little bit to get most of the epoxy in there. And then we'll put the second half down on top of it and we'll inject the rest of the resin that we mixed up into the mold to get our part. And I attach a straw onto a syringe with a little nipple on the end there, and then we'll draw that epoxy into the syringe. It's quite thick. It's very difficult to suck the epoxy into the syringe. So normally with a urethane that's much thinner, it's much easier to do. It also means there's a lot more pressure on that mold because the epoxy is thicker or more viscous. We'll put this into the pressure pot and we'll let it cure under 60 PSI overnight. Yeah, this stuff takes 12 hours to cure. Let's take a look at what we got. These pieces, they feel pretty hard. They, they snap right off. 
It's definitely hard stuff. So I like that. Let's pull the mold apart. You see how the flash goes everywhere? This is because of the epoxy is so thick. It spreads the molds apart and you get a lot of flash. It's a really nice freaking part. And let me tell you, that sucker, that sucker is stiff. It is strong. It's time to remake the open face mold of the little rubber part. I'm gonna use a tin cure silicone here. This is Silicone Inks 1040. And I use this for most of my mold making. I never have any issues with this stuff not curing. Degas it in the vacuum tank, just like I would any other silicone. Get all the bubbles out and we'll pour this into the one part open face mold, just like we did before. I don't think I'm gonna have any issues taking this part out. Pop it out now that it's cured. Oh, let's see. Yep, good, nice. I make two molds and we're gonna use a flexible urethane here to make these little parts tiny little parts you can see the reproduction here very detailed and if you have a little bit of excess you need to trim it off with an exacto again that is sort of the downfall of an open face mold you get kind of one nasty side if you pour in a little bit too much I'm gonna cast some urethane parts here just for comparison so you'll see right away much less flash on the part because the resin is much thinner and so the, the flash is also thinner to easier to break off and you also get a very very nice part it's very similar in structural stiffness to the urethane in this case maybe it's a little bit weaker but it's not a huge deal but I think the reproduction is better because you get less flash around the piece. There's an application for every resin out there, of course. The epoxy, though, with its long cure time, just too long for me. Oftentimes I have to pour multiple sets of parts or 50 or even hundreds of pieces. And that kind of cure time overnight, 12 hours, is just not going to work for me. Also, the smell of this epoxy is obnoxious. It's horrible. Like, I can't be in my shop for several hours after I mix the stuff. And you definitely not need to wear a mask. Not that you shouldn't be wearing a mask when you're mixing resins. But the smell is something I forgot to mention during the video. It is terrible. Now, Maybe there's other epoxies that don't smell as bad as this. If you're a manufacturer, it makes an awesome UV stable, you know, easy flow epoxy. Feel free to send me some. I would love to test it out. But urethanes for me are the way to go. There's much bigger variety in the urethanes that are available, much bigger flexibility in cure times and different pigmentation capabilities, and they're certainly UV stable, which is super important for me as well. I don't mind mixing it in a scale, doing a little bit of math, it's not a big deal. So I'm sticking with urethanes for most everything that I do, unless I find some sort of amazing epoxy, but I can't see that happening. Prove me wrong. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Also, don't forget to follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Links in the description below and on the channel page. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.